and I'm back with another plushie commission. This time, I'll be making Hazel Reinhardt from Ruby, and I was so excited when I got this one because I haven't made a Ruby character into one of my dolls since I made Salem back in 2020. Or was it 2021? I can't remember. I don't know, man. Time is a construct. Or in the immortal words of that one swamp guy from Avatar The Last Airbender, Time is an illusion. Also, I apologize in advance if you can hear a faint buzzing noise in the background. I have a heater on, well, a space heater, because my house isn't insulated at all, and it's currently like 25 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Anyway, now that the body is assembled, the first thing I did was create his beard by cutting it on a fold and then sewing it to his face. Now to start on his outfit. First I cut out some black felt for his undershirt with a small v-neck and added some lacing by using some black embroidery floss. Adding lacing to pretty much any part of a doll is one of my favorite parts of making dolls just because it's fun and it adds more flair or something a little extra, you know what I mean? It's the same joy I get when I make those tiny little pockets like I did on Sunny, okay? Lacing and tiny pockets make my brain do the happy sparkles. After attaching the shirt to the body, I started on his pants. I made the base part and the pant legs out of the same dark brown felt I used for his beard. And this part coming up is where I would show you a little time-lapse series of me attaching the legs to the body, but apparently I forgot to take those pictures while making Hazel, so my bad. Moving on, for the shoes, I started with this lighter chocolate brown shade and did the same technique I used on Luna and split an extra set of pattern pieces I cut out to create the top layers and sewed them all around the base to create that two layer effect where the bottom looks like the tongue of the shoe. And then I added some more lacing with more black embroidery floss. I always get excited when a character that I'm doing a doll for has laces on their boots because guess what, I get to do more lacing! After that, I added a small piece of grey felt for the steel toe. I would have used my metallic silver felt, but the brown felt I was using was pretty thick and the metallic felt is also very thick and I was worried it would be too difficult to turn the shoe inside out after sewing it with so many thick layers, so I decided to play it safer with the plain grey. Now that it's sewn all together, I just repeat the process for the other shoe, and then I cut out some black faux leather felt strips and hot glued them onto the top of the shoe for the straps. And for some reason, Hazel's boots have a lot of- he has an unnecessary amount of leather straps on his boots, okay? They serve no purpose except to look cool. After I got the boots on, I can attach the collar flap thingies. I don't really know what you call these, but you know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, you obviously see what I'm talking about. You know what I mean. And now to move on to his coat. And for said coat, I will be using two absolutely beautiful shades of green wool felt. Guys, the camera and the lighting do not do these greens justice. They are so much more vibrant and beautiful in real life. 
Hopefully, you guys can at least see part of their beauty when you see the glamour shots of Hazel at the end. But until we get to that point, starting with the two front pieces of the coat, I cut the trim and the yoke for it out of this beautiful lighter avocado green felt and hand sewed them on in their respective places. And usually, I would try to color match the thread to the felt, but I decided to go with a thread color that matched the darker green to add more visual interest. And I think I made the right call because it looks really good. And here is one of the panels all sewed up. I could have swore I had footage of me sewing on the trim, but I guess it got lost in the void somewhere, so sorry about that. I'm actually kind of bummed out about it. But anyway, Hazel's coat also has a second set of what I call tails on the front, which I made off camera to save time because it's just a lot of rinse and repeat of the same process, and I attached them to the centers of each panel. And don't worry, the belt will cover up where I attached it later. And now to add on the yoke detail, which kind of mimics a lapel shape, and for that I used this beautiful green embroidery floss in almost the same shade as the darker green and hand embroidered on the design. Doesn't that look gorgeous? I cannot get over how gorgeous these greens are. Also, again with the noise interruptions, I'm sorry. If you guys hear a dog barking in the background, that's one of my dogs in the backyard. Anyways, I repeated the same process on the other panel and then assembled the entire back coat panel off camera to save some time because it's just the same process. But man, does it look good. If I ever get commissioned to do Oscar's outfit from volume six, I will lose my marbles because I am definitely using this same color on there because it's just gorgeous. And now that we have the coat panels fully assembled, but before we put it onto the body, I went on ahead and started on the sleeves. The sleeve cuffs have this trim on them in the same lighter green as the yoke and the trim, so I fished out some embroidery floss in that same color and hand embroidered it onto the edges of the sleeve cuffs because the trim looked to be a little too thin for me to try and make it out of felt. I then attached the sleeve cuffs to the sleeves via more hand sewing, which also doubles as looking like top stitching. And you guys know how much I love top stitching! Now we have the sleeves fully assembled, let's attach them to the arms. Ta-da! Ah, oh, they look so good! And now with all the coat pieces and remaining appendages complete, we can finally put them on the body. And this is where I thought it's really starting to come together. And now to work on the finishing touch of his outfit, his belt. Hazel is rocking a very large, what I call a Santa Claus style belt, because it also has a gigantic buckle in the middle, alongside being just a very thick belt. Or wide? You guys know what I mean. So anyways, for the belt, I cut out a very wide strip of brown faux leather felt and then proceeded to top stitch it along both edges.
And let's take a look at that top stitching before we move on. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Mm-hmm. And for the buckle and whatever that triangular thingy is, I made them out of metallic gold felt, which I haven't used in a hot minute. Oh, wait a minute. I used it on Sunny. Never mind. What am I thinking? Anyways, after attaching the buckle and the triangle thingy, I don't know what you would call it, I added it over top of Hazel's coat, and with that, his outfit is finally complete. However, we still have one final step before Hazel in his entirety is finished, and that is his hair. Now, most of his hair is entirely slicked back, with the exception of two little small hairs kind of curling downward in the front. So I made a single panel of felt out of the same dark brown I used for his beard for the back and hand sewed that on and then created the tiny hair pieces in the front and sewed them down to, well, the front. Also, we gotta work on one more thing before he's done. I totally didn't forget to add on these brown straps to his pants until just now. I swear, guys. Okay, but now with that done, it is time for the final reveal. And cue the glamour shots. Also, quick shout out to my mom who helped me mix the color for Hazel's eyes. I wanted to get just the perfect shade of avocado green and she came in clutch. So thank you, mom. The coat has to be my favorite part of this whole doll. It just came out so beautifully. And I hope you guys think so too. This has got to be my favorite coat I've ever made for a doll. And out to send this big guy off to his new home. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.